your victory is guaranteed. Now, because some of us live a lifestyle of trusting God, we are not surprised when we get the victory. We are never caught off guard when God blesses us, promotes us, sends us better, does for us the good measure, the press, the shaking, and the running. The Lord visited Paul and stood by him. I love that. Because it reminds me of what God told us. That I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. See, sometimes when you're going through difficult times, you got to preach that to yourself. You got to remind yourself that I'm not alone. Uh, oh, folk may have walked off, but I'm still not alone. People may not even be able to see who's with me, yet I know that I'm not alone. Why? Because he promised me. He promised me. That he never leave, nor will he ever forsake me. And so God stood by Paul and said to Paul, Paul, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer represent two things I want you to receive. Number one. Oh, you need to take or have courage. Why do we need courage, Pastor? Because again, some things that we are in is permitted or allowed by God. And it's going to take courage to stay in a fixed place that even God himself knows you don't want to be in. See, this ain't one of them messages where I'm going to preach that God going to get you out of everything because some stuff he's put you in. But it's for his glory and it's for your elevation. I wish you tell somebody some trouble is necessary. Look at somebody else say some trouble is necessary to get you to where you need to be. Oh, somebody going through something this morning. But that trouble is necessary. Paul, I'm going to need you to be of good cheer. You're going to have to have courage, Paul, in the midst of what you're going through. Secondly, and what I want us to hang on to is that he's saying to Paul, in the midst of adversity, Paul, I'm going to need you to be optimistic. Because anybody can be optimistic when everything is wonderful. But where are those who can be in adversity yet remain optimistic can i break it down where are those that can get a negative phone call but you don't panic like everybody else in the family panicked even though what you were hearing on the other end of the phone was trouble yet you was optimistic in reference to the phone call I just said something then. Because some of us, the moment we hear a certain thing, we just simply fall to pieces or apart. And we are not optimistic. No, we're not. Not some of us. Some of us can just hear something. And we panic. Or we become pessimistic. You ain't even heard the whole story. Look, you need to get down here. And by the time you get down now, you look like you've been fighting. And you come in in a panic. Come in crying and don't even know what's going on. Why are you crying? You ain't seen nothing, but you're crying. See, you should have been able to show up. And as soon as the family saw you, you should have been able to say, all is well. Everything going to be all right. 
Don't worry about mama. She gonna be all right. Cause God is in the middle. See, when you optimistic, folks will look at you like you a fool. Go into a room where everybody is crying and sad and mourning and depressed. And then you come in like a bright light. Hallelujah. Good to see everybody. How everybody doing? Folks will look at you like, didn't y'all tell him? This serious. But praising God is serious. Magnifying God is serious. Speaking life is serious. It ain't time to speak no death. It's time to get life in your belly. Whoa! Be seated. But some saints are known for falling apart. Mr. Trouble. Don't get no voice message. You need to call, you need help. You need to help me call me. Good God Almighty, can you have a phone in your hand? Oh Jesus, what the Lord have mercy! I know something done bad, something bad done happen. Well, it might could be good news. See, notice Acts the ninth chapter. No, no, notice Acts nine. Now this is the Lord talking about Paul to a man by the name of Ananias. Who is going to have to pray for Paul? This is at Paul, the time of Paul's deliverance when he was converted. But I want you to notice this in Acts the ninth chapter in verse fifteen. But the Lord said to him, "Go." Talking about Paul now, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. This is what I want you to see now. For I will show him. I will show him, I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. See, it, see, see, the church nowadays talk against suffering. Talk about suffering like it's a bad thing. Even preacher that boldly tell for they shouldn't be suffering. But tell your neighbor, I'll pass the old school. Old school. Tell somebody, matter of, fact, matter of fact, he just ain't old school, school. but he Bible. Bible. See, Paul is a chosen vessel. Let me teach you. I want to be chosen. The chosen going to suffer. Chosen people are going to be mistreated by people that they've been good to. See, some of y'all didn't want to hear that. I said, when you are chosen, folks will mistreat you for no good reason. Folks will hate on you and will not have a valid reason why they don't like you. Their folk don't like me, they never met me. But I'm chosen. There are folks in my family that can't stand me. And if you ask them, what, 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 why you don't like him? Oh no, something about him. One, one, one thing he think he better than everybody. What he say or do that made you think he think he better than everybody? I don't know the way he carries himself. Can look at him. No, man, you hate me because I'm chosen. Some of you ain't ready for that. Some of you ain't ready for that. You're going to be talked about on that job. You're going to be talked about in that family. You're going to be mistreated sometime. Are you ready? Up in your own church. Because you are. You better tap somebody and tell them you might want to pray again about being chosen. Some of you complaining what you about what you're going through right now. And God ain't even sort of allowing I'm finna have to bring it to a close. But you need to listen to me though. He told Ananias. 
He's a chosen vessel of mine. I got my hand on that boy. I got something special for that boy. But I'm going to have to show him. He ain't going to want to see it at first. You know how folks always talk to you about God showing them the dreams. It's amazing. He showed you that new car. He showed you that new house. He showed you that new wardrobe. But for some reason, he never showed you that, that suffering. But see, you ain't legit until he show you, yes, your blessing, but also your suffering. See, some of us, God been trying to talk to us, but we ain't been listening. Because he been talking to you about how it's necessary for you to suffer. And some of us, we ain't listening. We don't want to hear that. Lord, I haven't did anything to her. Yet she goes out of her way to talk behind my back, but then smile in my face. I'm talking church folk. I'm talking kin folk. Got your own blood. Smile in your face. Oh, folk, you say they throw rocks and hide in they. But you know something going on because the rocks keep hitting your head. Parents, sometimes you'll be mistreated by your own children. You know, they know, and folk know you've been good to them. Yet they choose to persecute you. And God will sometimes say, shut your mouth. I was trying to show you that. I'm going to show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. So tell your neighbor, all that stuff going on in Acts 23 is all a part of God's plan. Tell your neighbor, could it be that some of that suffering is what he's been trying to show you?